French fries are perhaps the most popular side dish in American cuisine. Yes, we're talking about this. And going around the studio, the deep fried goodies are causing some controversy. Joining us now at the big screen is Church Milton's own Michael Voris to talk about the crispy caper frying all of this apostolate's best minds. Yeah, that's correct. It's kind of crazy, but this it should have actually been the lead story on evening news tonight. And honestly, with election days coming up and the thousands of polls that have been conducted, we here at Church Milton decided we're going to conduct our own poll. Welcome to the Daily Beat. I'm your host, Michael Vorce. Quick reminder, I'm going to be answering your questions live a little bit later in Daily Beast, so get those ones coming in here to the hosts as they monitor it. Now, with the fate of the free world hanging in the balance on Tuesday, the staff here at Church Millicen has become embroiled in its own controversy. Which French fry is the best? Waffle, curly, steak, crinkle cut, French fries, they come in so many different varieties. And this apostolate is a longtime supporter of the trans community, which you know, the trans fat community, that is. <laughs> we took a scientific poll of everyone at the apostolate, so there is no margin of error here to report to determine which style of French fries is the favorite of church militants. The results led to a firestorm of debate, not to mention some rumbly tummies. This Fry Guys poll has been closely monitored. Over in our control room, the talliers have been recording the results since yesterday. Okay, you guys, today is November 4th. Last night, if you'll remember, at 35, 836, it was curly and regular that were tied for first, steak was second. As of right now, at 11 a.m., curly has taken the lead uh, behind uh, Curly is regular and then steak fries. So Curly is looking like a strong contender at the moment, but we'll keep you updated. <laughs> if everybody sitting at home is going, have they lost their minds at Church Militant? Well, sort of. We never actually had them completely. But anyway, we're going to get into why we're doing this in just a couple of seconds. But we also had to check in, of course, because we checked with everybody who works for Church Militant. We went to Rome to our Rome correspondent there, Jules Gomez, and he gave us the international perspective. Jules? I'm a traditionalist when it comes to fries. Really? Okay, interesting. And fries are so sacramental that it depends who consecrates them, who cooks them. So. <laughs> and whether they're cooked in fat or in oil. So you've got to have, you know, if it's, they're not cooked in lard or dripping, there's got to be a little proportion, you know, proportion of that. <laughs> Leave it to Jules to give us the big international flavor. Get that flavor. <laughs> now, before we release the final results, we're going to say this. The results have not yet been certified, and those of us who voted for steak fries, well, we're petitioning for not just a recount, but also a full audit. And our investigative team has discovered that at least one staffer was actually allowed to change his vote. So there's a lot of like hijinks going on here. So with that said, here are the results. Remember, they're uncertified right here. The CM Fry Guys poll, 25.9% said curly are the best fries. 22.4 said steak, 22.4 said regular, 17.2 waffle and shoestring wedge and crinkle all came in there bringing up the rear and the poll was conducted by Shane Cahill Enterprises of Fry Pulling Inc. So <laughs> we have all of this down. Now, joining us at the little desk for reaction to all of this is senior producer and French fry enjoyer, Joseph Enders. And you can take a look at Joe and see that he actually does enjoy French fries, but a lot. <laughs> Joe, what are your thoughts on the poll? Remember, it's uncertified, and like I said, we can tell you actually are something of a connoisseur when it comes to French fries. Thanks, Mike. That's real funny, but you know, turn up your hearing aids for this one. All right. What I got? What? Waffle fries. What? Waffle fries. Waffle fries. That's where the real victory is. I know what you're thinking. You, got on, two other, you have two other. You have two other results up there. I know. 25.9 for curly. 22.4 for steak fries. And I know you slipped in that little steak fries remark in earlier yeah, in the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, because it's true. Slip that in there. I saw that was true. sneaky. I didn't write that. <laughs> I'm just letting you know right now. There is no chain of custody on all of our. Yeah. Around around the country, people, we have no idea that these results are 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 are. are 
you know, correct. We have no idea about any of these sorts of things. And here we, and, and here these results go up there. And me, as the waffle fry enthusiast, you could look at them right behind me, crispy, seasoned, delicious. That looks like how much sizable. you ate last night, as a matter of fact, that picture behind you. All I'm going to say, all I'm going to say is that steak fries, they're not even seasoned, Mike. They're not oh, even come seasoned. Come on, you can have steak fries seasoned. They're all over the place here in Detroit. Let's, now, look, if everybody's all sitting all at home is going like, you know, if you guys are all sitting at home going, what are they going on about? All right, so this was actually prompted because the guys in the control room were all just kind of having their own little, hey, hey, hey thing going on. I walked in there last night after the show. And, you know, we have had a couple questions uh, this past week during the live questioning is people going, how do you guys like keep your minds together? And this is horrible and the stuff you report on and blah, 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 and all this election stuff. Blah, 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 and everything and, well, this is kind of how we do it. I told you one of the ways we do things here is there's uh, when we're not really serious about something, we're like a bunch of eight year olds. So uh, we figured we'd just share a little some of our fun behind the scenes for, you know, next Monday and Tuesday are going to be dramatic, Joe. They're going to be crazy around here. Everybody's already been told you're going to be working until probably three in the morning on election day we're all coming in that's going to be probably a 17 18 hour day and the day before because of our preview i think we have a graphic here that we can bring up showing you what our election coverage is starts monday at seven evening news this time slot uh, is going to be all election and all preview we've worked very hard to get to that point and then at 6 p.m. on election day, Tuesday, uh, that's going to be quite the drain. If you've watched our election coverage before, you know how incredibly prepared we are for all of this. And we just bring you everything from a Catholic angle. Watch us, not the mainstream media. But in preparation for that, this is a little blowing off steam and having some fun and all of that. So, uh, again, Joe, I think your waffle stuff is, you know, look, it's sitting down there. Didn't even want one out of five. It's crazy. Who eats a potato with holes in it? And... Curly fries, I'm telling you, I, I'm telling you, I think the, uh, it's rigged. I think this is a Joe Biden poll, uh, you know, inspired behind the scenes. I think the Democratic Party got a hold of this and, you know, the World Economic Forum, and they changed it because they hate steak fries. Uh, it's just that clear. They're you trying to eliminate steak fries from the world, and this is how they're doing it. You just said that you could have seasoned steak fries. And as I said before, you can get them at KFC. They're called potato wedges. And if you turn around, look where potato wedges are no, on no, your that's poll. Not a potato wedge. Joe, you don't, no, you don't, no. Listen. That's it. No. Joe, 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 look, go, go have some awful fries. We, we got to move on with the show. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, as a reminder, all of this intelligent conversation is free to you, but it's not free for us to produce for you. If you like what you see and you hear, and I mean regularly, not French fry wars, please give us a call at 248-545-5716, or you can just go to our donate link at churchmilitant.com forward slash FFF stands for fighting for the future. We are trying to lock ourselves down here for the future to be able to continue doing this, even in the midst of the disastrous Biden economy. On now to the questions portion of the show. Guys, who's first? Full disclosure, Mike, I was waffle fry as well. Oh, man. We'll, we'll talk okay. about that. Uh, all right. That's, this is, this, <laughs> I'm telling you, it was rigged. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, this question was actually from yesterday. We could not get to it. Uh, does the church demand we pray for life even in cases of severe brain damage? Does the church require that we pray for life? Well, sure. I mean, look, you, you pray for God's will, ultimately. Uh, you can, if you are uncertain in a given moment, there are a certain set of circumstances, what God's will is at that very moment, obviously, you can pray for something, uh, you know, that you want. we never pray against God's will. We never will for something against God's will. It doesn't work like that. But sure, I mean, if there is somebody who is, you know, dying or on death's door or something like that, it's perfectly legitimate to pray that if it's God's will, the person be, you know, cured or, you know, brought back or, you know, whatever the, the case is. But you're also implicit in that prayer and sometimes is willing, you, you know, you should be willing to express it also is, although this is my will and I do not know in this given moment what your will is, the prayer of our Lord in Gethsemane, mm -hmm. your will be done. So certainly, I mean, if you're not praying for anything that's sinful, uh, well, yeah, you can pray uh, and just say, and, you know, if this is in accord with your will, please grant it. If it's not, please give me the strength or the insight to see it and deal with it if it's not. Lots of horrible things in the short term happen to us that in the long run for us with God's will are actually the best outcome for us. Mm -hmm. So that's what you're always praying for. But sure, in the, in the short term, the answer to that question is yes. Yeah. 
Brad. That came in the bottom uh, category there of crinkle fry because they hold more ketchup. That's a full disclosure. Me and my son are on, on, on board with that. You should know, guys, that uh, everybody at home, uh, this man has a bottle of ketchup on his desk with a straw in it. So just <laughs> so you know that. But he, he should be disqualified. See, it's kind of stuff I want to go back and review in the poll. There should be some people. I don't even think that, I don't think that's even a legitimate French fry vote. It's kind of like an illegal alien vote. Just shouldn't count. <laughs> so the, uh, a lot of, a lot of, of, uh, comments tonight on uh, climate child Greta Thunberg and one person brings in what can be considered kind of a deeper question uh, they ask what gives this child so much power you know think about it in a deeper sense there and they started all commenting on you know who and what and where there's something going on there can you tap tap into that it is the media the big M that's what gives her the power because she can sit in front of a camera and she threw that little hissy fit, remember, a few years ago. You're wrecking my childhood. No, not so much as you're flying around the world on you know, private jets to give your little, you know, you're wrecking the world thing. You've stolen my childhood. This, uh, it's the me, you know, we keep pounding it here. It's why when, when years ago, when I started this apostolate, it was media. I've worked in this my entire life. I understand the power of the media. You know, thousands of people are going to watch this thing that there's about 10 of us doing right now, well, maybe, maybe a little bit more than 10, uh, actively uh, on, during the live portion of the show. Obviously, the whole studio works on this during the day. But uh, yeah, this is a very small number to influence a very large number of people. And it's all through these little electronics and cameras and everything else we have here. That's what she does. She sits in front of a thing. She fits the narrative. Many of the people that are behind the cameras controlling the, uh, the, the narrative of the world look for cases and they find them and then they celebrate them They make a celebrity out of the person and all of a sudden everybody knows their name as though you know one week ago you'd never heard of the person and now she's everybody's you know uh, you know idol and everything else it's the media anybody can sit in there it's just you got to understand they lose one icon they just pull them out and they insert another it's just a talking puppet that happens to for whatever reason somebody's made the decision let's run with him or let's run with her and they prop them up for as long as they need to prop them up and then they move on and they move on to the next one it's you know not for nothing did uh, father john harden servant of god father john harden call it the luciferian media the m big media lie that's why there has to be a catholic presence here those of you who know father pablo straub he told me Michael, we must bring Christ to the internet. He told me that in the very first year of this apostolate. There must be a faithful, professional, Catholic presence on the internet with intelligent people working behind the scenes and on camera who know the faith, who know what's going on, who can, can connect the dots for you. That's why we're always, always asking you guys for funds to help keep this going. TV is very expensive. Uh, and, you know, they've got, you know, Satan's billions. I was just actually complaining about that because I complain a lot about stuff uh, with Simon the other day and just, uh, you know, we were just having an offline conversation. It just drives me nuts how the, the demon worshipers and the Satan worshipers and the media have access to tens of billions of dollars to corrupt people's minds. And we're constantly groveling for, can you give us $500? It just, you know, it drives you nuts. I worked in that world my entire life. Life. And uh, I saw the influence of it. And uh, yeah, it made a deep impression on me because I understand the power in the, few, in the hands of those few people. And somebody like Greta gets that celebrity because of those few people behind the scenes. And Michael, you obviously understand the power of palm frites because the chat just exploded with people who are passionate about French fries. <laughs> so before I get to the question, I just have to mention a handful of people say McDonald's is the only way to go. Okay, that wasn't part of, you know, our survey, but nonetheless, they like McDonald's. And I want to share this because I think this is educational. Tim said fries are best when cooked in duck fat. Yes, that, I actually would agree with that. It's just, you know, it's a big aggravation to have to be able to do that. And you're usually not, you know, it's, it, there's, a, there's a whole process there. You get the duck fat heated up and you clean up the mess and all that. But... I'd agree with that. Almost everything is better cooked in duck fat. Well, I short of that, that, steak fries. <laughs> <laughs> Not letting go of this. In steak duck fat. fries. 
No, no. Okay, so here's the actual question. You guys do know I sign your checks, right? Y'all know that. That's right. Snake fries are wonderful. So it says, someone said, it's good to see church militant likes to have fun. Yeah. What is Michael's favorite way to unwind when he has downtime? Notre Dame football. Uh, I, I don't know if you can actually call it unwinding when, you know, they're having a bad season, which kind of is this year, and a bad, which they've had for quite a few years, uh, and a bad game and a bad play. I don't think anybody would look at me and saying I'm relaxing. Uh, let's just say sometimes after a game I have to sort of hightail it to confession. <laughs> but, no, it's just uh, I like going to movies, love going to movies, good movies, obviously. Uh, like the movie theater experience of, you know, big popcorn and big frozen Coke and all that and busting my, my diet plan. That's the only real place I do that routinely. Uh, but, yeah, just like kind of being you know, visually distracted from, you know, what's going on. The stuff we do here, I mean, it's all salvation of souls. It's always playing in the back of your mind. But sometimes you just need to kind of unplug. French fry poles are awesome for that. That's true. Uh, yeah, they're, what they're, about outdoors? Anything outdoors or no? I love walking my puppy rebel. Okay. And he loves it too. I reach for that leash and you, you, he goes insane. It's, uh, I don't even have it in my hand yet. And he's like, ah, ah, ah. So he's a wonderful pup. So yeah, I love doing that as well. All right, guys, we're going to go to the venerable Fulton Sheen for our final beat of the night. We asked him what type of French fry he likes best, and he told me in a private revelation earlier at Steak Fries. He also said one would not generally put garbage into the stomach, but often one will put garbage in the mind. That is certainly true. If you have ever, ever dealt with people, guys, I'll ask you, look, we, we see a flood of garbage coming into the mind here all the time uh, from mainstream media. Uh, you know, if we get a shot, because you guys want to take a shot of the, uh, uh, the pit in the control room and just show people a little, you know, wide shot there. We sit out there and uh, there are monitors all over the place uh, where all our reporters and producers and editors sit. We see CNN and Fox and all that, and it's up there all the time. Uh, and the, the garbage that comes through there, the lies, the half-truths, the omissions, constantly. Uh, and, and people are being bombarded with it, bombarded with it. I used to say to my dad, uh, you know, back in the early days of the Apostle, Dad, it's important to have to come out and say, uh, you know, and you can't just do like one project. You can't just say, oh, here's this fantastic movie that we've spent $40 million on. It's very, it might be well shot and well produced and famous actors and, and win an Academy Award. It's the most incredible thing ever in the history of mankind. And the next day it's gone and the steady drip, drip, drip of the mainstream media continues. You have to fight the daily drip. That's the point. You have to be there. Uh, that's why advertising is so important. It's so important uh, to be able to be in the discussion. You know, McDonald's spends tons of money, hundreds of millions of dollars a year on advertising. Hundreds of millions of dollars a year in advertising because they understand the importance of reinforcement. You know, restate it, restate it, keep the narrative going. You know, to all beef patty, special sauce, those cheese, pickles, onions on step seed bun. They get it over and over and over. That's how you convince people. That's how you convince people by, especially if you've got the truth on your side, you have to repeat it. Just before I leave you tonight, I want to tell you that remember to tune in for our coverage again. We touched on it earlier during the French fry poll on uh, Monday, right here, 7 p.m., uh, during regular evening news. We'll probably go a little bit later on evening news on Monday night because there's just an awful lot of stuff to cover. We don't really have an out time, but it won't be all that long. But then starting Tuesday, 6 p.m., the staff here is thrilled to put in a 14 to 18 hour day. We'll figure out and see how things go because there's a lot of stuff happening out west with the Arizona and uh, Nevada races out there. That control of the Senate could come down to that. We don't know, so we don't know when the night's gonna end. But election nights here are always fun, draining, and a lot of uh, a lot of work. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, we're going to throw it back to you so you can bring us on home. Steak fries, steak fries.